Welcome everybody to TensorFlow Meets, and this is our very first episode of this show. TensorFlow Meets is a show where we meet with people in the community who are working with TensorFlow. Today, it's my honor to meet finally with Chip. She's teaching the famous CS20 course at Stanford. I have to tell a story before we begin about how I met Chip. So I was studying in, uh, studying some AI in Stanford, and there was a robotics course. What was the instructor? Uh, Osama Mahatib. Awesome. Great instructor. He, he's amazing. Super yeah. cool guy. And the first homework assignment came in, and I did not have a clue. <laughs> it, was, it was such a long time ago. It was like it was in about, about freshman two, year. Two, it was like three years ago. Was it that long? Um, oh, OK. Yeah. And, and, and I just remember, and it was like, you had offered for, to help. And like I was totally stuck with this thing. And Chip kind of scribbled this thing on a napkin and scanned it and emailed it to me. And I was like, boom. <laughs> then suddenly I knew what was going on, and it's like I knew this girl was going to go places after that. And now look at you, you're, you're teaching a wow, course. Wow, that's very so. kind of you to say that. So at that time, I was actually still considering doing an English major because mm -hmm. I came to Stanford as a, as a writer. Okay. Before Stanford, I was like traveling a little bit and then wrote a couple of books, and I really liked writing. Yep. But then I took this one CS course, like CS 106A, like everyone at Stanford takes it. CS 106A, everybody yeah. does that, yes. Um, and I worked in the lab with Osama Khatib, and mm -hmm. he said, like, okay, like you work here, then you, you sort of like had to take this course and they changed the stand robotics right. so I took the course and after that I like CS more and more and yeah and, and now, now I'm a, yeah now you, you had written like travel books in Vietnam right I'd like to call them uh, stories I was traveling uh, for almost three years like in Asia Africa and South America mm -hmm. and I wrote books about people I met and what I saw and what I thought of the life it was a whole new world to me back then and so it was a journey from like travel and meeting people about life and then coming mm -hmm. to study like an english major and then <laughs> in cs and now teaching ai so tell us about the course i had an idea when i was a sophomore and i was doing um, one class natural language processing and the course used um, tensorflow mm -hmm. and i started digging into the the library and then later on during the summer i used it for my job uh, at a startup it was pretty early of the TensorFlow uh, progress, so there was not a lot of documentation. Okay. I had a lot of trouble trying to figure out what to do. And, and then I, I looked into the source code on GitHub, <laughs> and I just thought, wow, this is like such a huge library with so many amazing tools. And why just like, why didn't I know about it before? Maybe there should be a group where we can just meet and learn from each other. Mm -hmm. And so I told it to some of my professors at Stanford, can we have a course on TensorFlow? And they were like, oh, we are too busy to teach it. So, so you do it. <laughs> yeah, so I was like, OK, I can try and give it a shot. And now this is your second year you're teaching it right now? Yeah. How's it been like picked up by students? Do they like it? Um, for me as a student, I'm not, uh, like for me to teach a course, I need a faculty sponsorship. And Chris Manning was a person who did it. Um, and he advertised a course on a very popular course that he was teaching. Okay. So the first year was pretty overwhelming. Um, we got like um, 350 applications. Wow. I was only allowed to take 20 because um, I'm not allowed to like take more students than that. I see. Yeah, I think the feedback was um, pretty positive. Uh, and then Stanford, um, let me do it again, mm. but with more students. But I, because I'm still carrying a full workload as a student at Stanford, so I don't think I'm I, I'm ready for like a lot of students. Right. So this year we have about like 40 students. Okay. Yeah. It takes me on average like 20 hours a week okay. to prepare one lecture. There are two lectures, so it's gonna be 40 hours. That's a full-time job. That's, that's a lot of time. A lot of the information that you've put together for the mm -hmm. course is available to the public, right? Your code yeah. is on GitHub and stuff like that. Have you seen like any uptake from students or from people outside using your code or learning from your code? I think I was surprised at how many visits so I get to the GitHub repo. I just check it one time. It's like, wow, you know, that's like they're like on average like 2,000 visits a day. It's like, wow, right. that's a lot. I've only recently joined mm -hmm. the TensorFlow team and uh, just in the last couple of months. So mm -hmm. I've been scouring the web for things to learn. How am I going to learn this? How am I going to learn that? And almost every like site that I fall on, well, people always end up pointing back to your mm -hmm. GitHub repo. Mm -hmm. So oh, it's like, hey, if you nice. want to learn how to do like a linear regression, mm -hmm. look at Chip's code. And if you want to learn how to do this, look at Chip's code. So it's like I had to say really like, cool. some of it is a bit embarrassing because now I, um, because this year when I'm preparing uh, the lecture again, I reread the notes from last year. It's like, oh my god, I just. You know, like when it, when you try to make a joke, but it wasn't funny, and yeah. it just showed on the paper. It was like, oh my god, why did I do that? It was, yeah, it's 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 a constant process mm -hmm. of improving. It's the same when you're doing developer advocacy work. It's like mm -hmm. sometimes, like I look back on talks that I've done, and like, no, those jokes didn't work. <laughs> you know, so. Yeah, I'm glad I get a chance to do it again, so I can have a slightly more polished yeah. um, note. So say I'm a developer and like uh, I'm, a, I'm a typical software developer right now, and I really want to get into the AI machine learning. Mm -hmm. And there's a, 
there's a whole universe of technologies out there yeah. in AI and ML. What advice would you give me? I think it's a bit hard for me to give advice because I think of myself as somebody who's just starting. Like I have been doing it for like a little bit over oh, two years now. So it's you, still very you know, early. Right? It's because it's such a nascent technology. Yeah. Two years is a long time, so your, your experience <laughs> is very valuable. So I think it's, uh, it, it really depends on um, on what exactly you want to get into because yeah, like ML AI is very broad. So mm -hmm. you can either become a software developer, so you can develop tools like TensorFlow or PyTorch. You can also be like applied research when you, just, uh, when you apply like some new research into, into production, or you can just be become a very pure researcher, just like come up with new algorithms, new, right. yeah, new architectures. So for me, um, I think like, as for me, I, I have always wanted to become a researcher. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I find that for that, math is, math is very important, especially <laughs> the algebra, like you need to know a matrix a multiplication. A matrix multiplication, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I think I would recommend that you need to get up a uh, little algebra background, like straight up, and then also need some uh, probability okay. um, background, because everything is a distribution in, <laughs> in this. Um, yeah, yeah. And um, I think read a lot of papers. Uh, so some advice that I have got uh, from people who are in the field for a long time is just tell me to read a lot of papers. Like, uh, they tell me like in every morning to check, check archive. Like okay. for the for the like most popular papers. Oh wow! And yes, That's dedication. Just like, yeah, <laughs> and just like read them uh, or like skim the the abstract just okay. to know that like what I go up to in the field. Right. And then take a lot of online courses. There's so many online courses like, available for free online. Right. Um. Yeah. And after doing the paper, you can either implement it yourself, or just to like yeah, just to try because you cannot really understand a paper until you actually like try to implement mm. what the paper is talking mm. about. Um. And also can look at how other people implement that on um, online just to compare like the way you approach a problem. That, that's the magic of open source. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. And like as we were talking about earlier on, like the open source that you've written for your course that's on GitHub has been very valuable for me learning it as well as for lots of other people. That's very kind you so, just say that. Thank you. Uh, you're yeah. welcome. You're welcome. So thank you so much for being on the show, Chip. Thank and you so much for having me. Oh, you're very welcome. And we've learned so much. And thanks, everybody, for watching this episode of TensorFlow Meets. Remember, this show is about you. It's a show for the community where we'd love to have you on the show, where Tensor flow meets you and talks with you about what you do. If you've got any questions for me or if you've got any questions for Chip, please leave them in the comments below. And if you want to be on the show, if you're doing something interesting, please get in touch with us. And remember, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more great TensorFlow content. Bye.